Live from WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 7. It is 7 o'clock on your Tuesday morning. We begin here with an early warning weather alert. Let's take you outside. We'll give you a live look. A very pretty start as we look at our eye cam over New London, but our fourth heat wave of the year is underway and some storms could be rolling through later today. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. I'm Eric Parker. Let's get over to meteorologist Scott Haney. He's got a check of the forecast. Heat advisory in effect for all of Connecticut with the exception of northern Litchfield County. I invited them to the party. They didn't want to come, but nonetheless, everybody should be playing along. Yes, a heat advisory in effect once again, just like yesterday. Those temperatures are expected to move on up. Yesterday, it got to 98 degrees, sending the old record of 96 from 1964 packing. 94 was the new record in Bridgeport, sending the old record of 91 from 2005 packing. So it it was a hot day yesterday and today the records 96 at back four years ago at uh, Bradley 95 in 1949. Now the 95 might be a little hard to get to in Bridgeport, but that 96 is certainly within reach at Bradley will certainly keep you posted. This is, as Eric just mentioned, the fourth heat wave of 2020. 93 on Saturday, 94 on Sunday, 98 on Monday, and today we will definitely make it into the 90s. Uh, it just remains to see how high we're gonna go. We're forecasting a high of 95, but we could get a degree or two warmer. We'll just wait and see. 22 90 degree days thus far this year. Average annual 17 days, the record 38 days set back in 1983. And boy, we still got a long way to go. We got the rest of July. I know there's not too many days left in July, but we've got all of August and even we can get some 90 degree days here in September. So we're just going to wait and see. It's been a hot one. So how hot? Well, we're in third place right now for the hottest July on record. This is since we've been keeping records back in 1905. Our Channel 3 early warning dual pole radar scanning the state dry. It's a magnificent start out there, but later this afternoon we do run the risk for scattered showers and some thunderstorms, some of which could be strong to severe. The Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma has placed Connecticut in the marginal risk category to receive some of these strong storms. Typically when they do, something happens. So we've got a cold front that's going to be bearing down on us and that's going to touch off those showers and thunderstorms as it moves into this moist and humid air mass. Take a look at the numbers, folks. Oh, wow, 82 degrees right now in East Hartford, 80 in West Haven, 74 in Winstead, 77 in Plainfield, but it feels like 86 in East Hartford and 85 in West Haven. It is a warm start out there. More temperatures, 80 at Bradley, 80 at Brainerd, 80 in New Haven and Groton. You've got dew points in the upper 60s and low 70s. So with the heat index, with the relative humidity combined with the temperatures, it feels like it's 83, 84, 85 this morning. So brace yourselves. It's warm out there. Hartford looking good. New London looking good. Stores looking good. Uh, but we do have um, a cold front that's going to be bearing down on us as we move through the day today. And that's going to touch off some scattered showers and some thunderstorms. So another hot one storms this afternoon. Here's the frontal boundary. You can see storms to the north of us. And according to early warning future cast tomorrow, weather today. We do run the risk for scattered showers and thunderstorms. They'll pop up during the afternoon. You can see them materializing five, six, seven o'clock. Your uh, daytime highs today in the mid 90s with showers and thunderstorms expected. And then tomorrow is a better day. Still a hot day, but a better day. All right, Eric, that's a check of your early morning forecast. I'll send it back to you. All right, Scott, we'll give you the latest now on the coronavirus here in Connecticut. New numbers show that more than 200 people have tested positive for COVID-19 just since Friday. Five more people have died, but 12 were released from the hospital. That brings the total number of hospitalizations all the way down to 59. State leaders are leaning toward a full reopening of schools this fall, saying so far Connecticut's coronavirus numbers continue in the right direction. This is a public education emergency, and we're going to step up to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our learners, getting them in the classroom, because that's where they learn best. But they warn the back to school plan is fluid and ultimately districts will be able to decide if an in person or hybrid model works best. If families don't feel comfortable sending their kids to school, they will have the option to continue remote learning. And negotiations are underway on Capitol Hill on a new coronavirus relief bill. Senate Republicans unveiled their plan yesterday. It reduces the emergency federal unemployment supplement from $600 a week to $200. We want to continue to help the unemployed, but we want to encourage work. And we've learned a very tough lesson that when you pay people not to work, what do you expect? You don't tell someone who's lost his or her job through no fault of their own that you're getting a 30 percent pay cut. That is just not fair and not right. Now, both parties support another round of $1,200 checks to most working taxpayers. 
More progress is being made in the race for a coronavirus vaccine. Two companies have now started massive trials as they test their drugs. Moderna and Pfizer are each looking for 30,000 people to participate. Half will get the vaccine, the other half will be given a placebo. If the next phase is successful, it's possible vaccines could be available by the end of the year. But a new CBS News poll finds only 30% of Americans would get it right away. Half the country said they'd consider it, but would wait to see how others are affected first. Some new developments as thousands of customers across the state are trying to make sense of an increase in their electric bill. Eversource told Eyewitness News the extra costs were because of a state-mandated deal with Millstone Nuclear Power Plant. But now that company, the company that runs the plant, says that's not entirely true. In a statement, the company said, quote, This contract went into effect in October 2019, nine months before Eversource's latest rate increases. It was vetted and approved by all state energy regulators. Connecticut's Attorney General William Tong says his office is now investigating. And the special legislative session continues this morning and today. The state Senate is set to debate police reform legislation. Last week, House lawmakers passed the bill that would make police officers financially liable if they violate someone's constitutional rights. The Connecticut State Police Union calls it an attack on law enforcement. New this morning, five swimmers had to be rescued near Charles Island in Silver Sands Beach in Milford. It happened last night. Firefighters say the group was swept away from a sandbar, but thankfully everyone was helped back to shore and no one was hurt. Meanwhile, in Middletown, two firefighters are recovering from heat exhaustion after fighting a fire on the roof of the Middletown water treatment plant on River Road yesterday. The building was not badly damaged, but it was a difficult job because of where the fire was and the extreme heat outside yesterday. South Fire District and four other departments from surrounding towns were all called in to help. Thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime. Just turn to the Channel 3 app. Thanks for watching. I'm Eric Parker. Have a great day.